All right, so the Panthers offense has, my God, not been good this year. When all those categories are in the mid to low 20s, except for one, that is not good. And that resulted in a change being made out of the Carolina Blue on Sunday. Joe Brady, the offensive coordinator, is out here as Matt Rule coached the team from Monday, explaining the decision to fire Joe Brady and saying that he had no regrets hiring him fewer than two years ago. Here's Rule. It was just purely football. I think, um, um, you know, that this was um, this was in the best interest of us moving forward. I feel like we can play better on offense. Uh, that's not about any one person or any one thing, but I just um, feel like, uh, you know, th th this was the best way that I can help us move uh, this forward. I, I When I took the job, I decided to, you know, uh, I decided to be bold and step outside my comfort zone and, um, you know, someone that I knew and went, went in a different direction. I went with Joe and I, I certainly don't look at that as a mistake. I think what Joe did the first year dealing with COVID and installing a whole new system, you know, we obviously had some turnover at the quarterback position. I think um, I look at Joe's time here as all, I see all the good things that he did. Um, you know, it's just a, you get to a time such as this and it's time to, you know, move in another direction and continue the evolution and the process of building forward. Um, and I'll just say it again. I think Joe's going to have a fantastic career. Um, sometimes the worst things that happen to you are the best. And, um, you know, I'm grateful for his time here. That is just so weird to me. He fired him. I look at the good things Joe did. Well, you, didn't, you, you apparently didn't find enough of them. You fired him. You, you didn't demote him. You didn't, you know, change up his duties. You told him, pack your, I almost said the word, and leave. That's what you told him. It's hard to reconcile that one day with this very nonchalant praise of him the next day. You fired him. Something was going on there that caused you to fire him. Something was going on that caused you to fire him on the Sunday, the midpoint of your two-week break. Not the Monday yeah. after you guys got stomped by That's the Dolphins doctor, right. and your offense looked horrible. I want to know what happened in Carolina. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. I want to know, and I deliberate if it's a Godfather thing. We got you. I know the I right. know the proper days of the week. But what happened? Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. What happened between Monday and Sunday to get to this point? How involved was David Tepper? Who we know. We know. We we know he's involved. How much of it was Joe Brady and Cam Newton? not quite mixing the way that they should. Joe Brady not quite being as flexible as he needs to be to reincorporate Cam Newton into the Carolina offense. There's got to be something because this doesn't happen. Well, it did. It doesn't happen in a properly functioning football team. We say all the time dysfunctional teams do dysfunctional things. Well, when dysfunctional things happen, you work backward and say, Meh, uh, uh, dysfunctional team. Yeah, I mean, look, look, I, I, hey, first thing, like you said, you know, the over-the-top praise, you know, after you fired them, and, okay, it, it, it's coach speak. You know, these guys don't ever want to talk badly about, you know, another coach. They feel like, oh, if I say things bad, it might affect his career down the road. They're not trying to ruin their lives or their family. He fired I him know. a day I know. before. But they don't want to publicly ridiculous. do it or say it that way. You look like a liar. Oh, I, he's a great guy. I'm thinking all the great things he did. He's going to have a great career. We just could not keep that SOB around here for another minute. Well, I'm telling you. No, oh, oh, you, could, we have, could we have gotten through the next five games? We could have. But I had to get that guy out of here or I was going to strangle him. I mean, it doesn't – you can't reconcile the two. No. Why? But, I mean, I know he's got to address it, but this is where Bill Belichick is a master because Belichick would have never, ever, ever spoken like that yesterday. No, because no Because there's way. a point where you have to realize you look – you set yourself up. I'm not saying that Matt Rule is a buffoon. You set yourself up to look like one when you say things like that a day after you told a guy, pack your things and leave. Yeah, no, you're right. Belichick would have gained, hey, we respect what Joe did. He gave us a lot of hard work, but we just felt like it was the best, you know, interest of our organization to move on. We we had some philosophical differences, and you leave it at that. You're right, you know, but but again, hey, the issue at hand was pretty, pretty plain and simple. You know, uh, I think you heard me say for a number of weeks, right, with the Carolina yes. Panthers offense, there's just – there's nothing there. You know, there's too many games I was turning on going – Wait, I've seen this play. It's late in the second quarter. I've seen it five times already. I'm all about repeating plays, right? 
like New England repeated plays last night. Shanahan and the 49ers repeat plays, but they work. They're going, oh, that play that worked for 20 yards before, we're going to call it again. Carolina's calling plays with Joe Brady where I want to go, that play worked for minus two yards before, and you called it again, and it went for one yard, and you called it again, and it went for minus five, and we're still calling it like it was the best play in our offense. And that's the issue. The league caught on to the Joe Brady offense. There was no answers. You know, Mike, how many games did I come in here and tell you on a Tuesday or Wednesday where I went, yeah, I, Sam Darnold wasn't good. I get it, but, man, I, I, the defenders on some of these teams were running the routes for Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore. You know, there's too much talent on that team on the offensive side of the ball. I'm not saying they should be the greatest show on turf, but there's there's plenty of talent to go around to where they should have better results, especially in the passing game, than they do. So I understand the change. What I don't understand, Mike, is what you said. All right, go ahead. You want to you want to jump into this and say something? Let me say that because yeah. then we're gonna right. we're gonna get into the timing of it in a second. Yeah, okay. Here's my here's yeah. my point. Right. I think this is what happens when you bring a coach from college who yeah. has always been at college. Matt Rule had one year as an assistant offensive line coach with the Giants in 2012, I believe. What well, because at college, it's it's not about your constantly evolving and self scouted schemes. It's it's just about you. You got your system. You line your guys up. You got better players. You go out and recruit better players. You do your thing. They're not going to have an answer for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. At the NFL level, you have to constantly be evaluating everything you're doing while you're probing your opponent every week for the things they do that you want to attack. You have to be guarding your own flank against them figuring out what you do, and you got to figure out what you do before they do. And you got to zig when they think you're going to zag. Exactly. Mike Tomlin talked about this last week as related to attacking Lamar Jackson. The Dolphins go heavy blitz. The Browns don't. It's a cat and mouse chess match of what do they expect? It's not just what are we going to do? What do they expect? Yes. And, and when, when, you, when you bring a college coach in who hasn't lived that life, is it a surprise that the systems aren't in place to aggressively self-scout and evolve your offense as the season goes on. Because they ran into a brick wall once there was enough film out there to figure out what they were doing this year with Sam Darnold. No, Plain and simple. Yeah, Plain and simple. Exactly right. Yeah, college college head coach, you know, college OC, who you bring in. And I know Joe Brady was with Sean Payton and company for a short while too there. But, yeah, you know, again, you understand the base level of stuff. But, you know, you got to be around people like Sean Payton for a long time to realize, you know, how he evolves – why he calls certain pass plays that are, yeah, wait, we call this play all the time, but he always calls it against the right defense or packages it with the right play, you know, understands the sequencing of how to call plays so they all tie together and you're not just throwing darts at a dartboard. You know, that was what to me was missing uh, from the offense, uh, certainly. There's no doubt. And no adjustment there at all. You know, and again, I know they haven't had great quarterback play, but I don't think they've done the quarterback many favors. And that, like, Miami game, yes. They had no answers for some of the defenses Miami threw at them. You know, very underwhelming game plan that way other than one big pass play early on in the football game. Uh, I got to think, Mike, the timing of it, like you talked about, there had to been conversations all week about – it's so weird. You're right. It's a bye week. They waited six days to fire the offensive coordinator. Why wouldn't you fire him day one or day two? I got to think there was a lot of talk about approach. What are you going to do? What are we going to change? And maybe there was just a continu continuing of butting of heads as the week went on to finally went, wait, he's not going to change. He's not capable. And we just got to cut the cord and move on. I, I really don't know, but it's very intriguing. Here's what Matt Rule had to say yesterday about why they did it when they did it. Planned on meeting with Joe on Saturday. Uh, he wasn't available Saturday, so I sat, to, sat down with Joe yesterday on Sunday, uh, informed him uh, that I was going to go in a different direction, came out of the game with some feelings and just, uh, you know, but in a lot of different areas and just took the week to go back and watch tape and think about it and, um, um, you know, kind of came, uh, finalized that decision later in the week. Uh, waiting kind of later in the week, did, did that kind of hurt in terms of giving Jeff a head start on kind of getting things organized and so forth? No, no. Everyone had projects to do last week, so everyone got their stuff done. And, um, um, you know, we're not changing what we are or what we're doing. We're just, you know, 
you know, we're, 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 you know, we have our offense, we have our installations. It's just about, um, you know, the vision we have for, for, for what we're doing right now. Uh, he wasn't available to come in on Saturday. Hey, 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 Joe, it's kind of important. It's kind of, I know you want to watch Alabama, Georgia, but it's kind of important that you come in today. We, we kind of have a fairly urgent matter to I discuss mean, with you yeah. today. That's just weird to me. I think that when the light bulb finally flickered for them, somebody decided, hey, let's drop this at a time when it's going to make the minimum waves. Let's drop this stone yeah. at the right angle so it just plops right in and doesn't splash. And it worked. Now, here we, we're, 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 still, we're still talking about it. We're talking. I don't know how many other people are talking about yeah, it. It was right. just kind of psh, gone. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.